What is going on, y'all? This is another West Report, but a little different version. As you can tell, you can see the, all the squares around me. Guys, look, this is the NCAA Football Week 10 recap show, basically. Guys, as always, man, follow AD Sports on all social media platforms. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We've eclipsed over 360 subscribers. So, hey, thank you, subscribers. Thank you for our love and our fans and our supporters, for sure. Just want to give a shout out to some of our sponsors. As you can see, we got Dave and Buster's, Ghost Pins, T Box, Big League Dreams, Co Work Coffees, and more on the way. Now, guys, if you haven't checked out some of the recent round tables, Three Man Rush, K Angels Kickballs, Chasing Rabbits, go check those out right now. Tell us what you think. Guys, also, if you haven't noticed this past weekend, we were in Frisco, Texas for a celebrity softball game. Now, of course, guys, if you might have seen the Live video with Mr. Fantasy himself, Mr. Wheelhouse himself, always is Jet Boyer himself, and Mr. Ricky Ram. Guys, do not worry. We will have tons of photos, tons of clips, tons of content from that spectacular weekend. Now, of course, I think the guys right now are playing a little golf, but what's not wrong with doing some of that? I think I might play a little golf, too, after this. Now, of course, guys, tomorrow, man, check in. Man, we got the newest round table at Dave and Buster's. Be able to check out some of our local guys that are there. Hope you like the last week's online Halloween version of the round table itself. Now grabbing, basically getting back into it now, guys. Week 10, college football players. Now, of course, previous week, now I won't even say previous week. This past Tuesday, they released the first top six for the playoff rankings for this upcoming CFP. Now, of course, guys, if you haven't seen, of course, Ohio State was ranked number one. Of course, Georgia was two, Michigan three, Florida State four, Washington five, Oregon six. Now, of course, some of your favorite teams in there like Texas at seven, Alabama at eight, Oklahoma at nine, and Ole Miss at ten. Well, guys, we have we'll have a little bit of shakeup this upcoming Tuesday. Of course, going down the top ten, Oklahoma losing in the last bedlam against Oklahoma State. Now, of course, history has shown us that Oklahoma has murdered. Oklahoma State in this freaking rivalry. But of course, with Oklahoma move, moving into the SEC, of course, Mike Gundy and Oklahoma State have been very vocal about they do not want to play Oklahoma because they're leaving the Big 12 and et cetera. All of it is basically politics. But yes, Oklahoma State covered as a six point underdog at home. Of course, I'm not going to lie, man. I love the way Bowen, Bowen played. You know, of course, rivalry game is going to be a ton of emotions. I love the way he throws that ball from one side of the field to the other. Of course, Oklahoma, not just, you know, losing to Kansas now, but now losing to Oklahoma State, basically ruining their chances of a college football playoff berth, unless really something catastrophic happened for them to get back. They have no shot no more. Usually how it goes in college football, you got two losses, man. You are done for the day. Now, of course, now they're coming out of the top 10, basically. Now that moves in Old Miss. Old Miss making a game out of what shouldn't have been nothing because they were already up double digits in the fourth quarter. Then they allow AM to come back. And, of course, AM and misses. A, I don't know. I thought it was a fairly easy kick. But they miss basically a 47, I think it was 48-yard field goal, to lose 38-35 to to Old Miss Rebels. Now, of course, Old Miss – Knocking on the door. Of course, that one loss to Alabama and Tuscaloosa is looking really good on the resume side. But, guys, next week, next week on week 11 in college football, we will probably have Ole Miss playing Georgia at Georgia. Now, of course, this is going to be an electric game, of course, because this is Ole Miss's really only shot to really trying to spark something in the college football playoff. I know with the loss to Alabama, these guys right now are probably looking from the outside in. But if you haven't seen, of course, you know why they're looking from the outside in. Because Alabama defeated LSU last night, 42-28. Now, for, me, for some of y'all that don't know, I am a Bama fan. That is from my mom's side of the family. So we roll with the tide, man. Roll tide! But I'm not going to lie. It was an electric game, man. These two teams are evenly matched when it comes to just scoring points left and right. I will say, man, Jaden Daniels. Man, it is making me a believer now. Of course, you know, when it comes to college football, there are a ton of quarterbacks that look good. But you know how it goes at the end of the day. Man, some guys are just college quarterbacks and not pro prospects. Jaden Daniels, man, basically is making me a believer. Got a great 
Got a great leg to freaking run around the defense. He was carving up Bama on the defensive side well, yesterday. But I will say I will give credit to, to our defensive coordinator still because first half, that guy don't know how to coach. But second half, that man knows how to coach for some odd reason. If you look at the past four, four teams we played, A&M, only three points. Ole Miss, zero. Tennessee, zero. LSU, seven. Now, yes, I do think LSU would have scored another touchdown or two if Jaden Daniels didn't get knocked out in the fourth by concussion protocol. But at the end of the day, hey, man, they are, the numbers are, are what they are, man. Alabama's defense in the second half, playing phenomenal. Now, of course, my guys at the AD group conference, Group chat basically does not still believe in Alabama, and don't worry. I didn't believe him after week two, week three, week four, but you're winning these games, and I'm not going to lie, Jalen Milrow, you, if you can play like that December 2nd against the Georgia Bulldogs, there will be some chaos in this college football picking because, man, Jalen Milrow looked good. Tommy Reese called a good game. So we'll see what happens. Now, of course, Texas won a nail-biter, man. Shoot. I know, of course, without Quinn Ewers, man, some of these games are going to be a little closer than usual. But Kansas State covered the spread at if you got it at three and a half or four. Guys, man, Kansas State could have won this game. But, hey, man, they went balls to the wall, went aggressive because they had nothing to lose being at six and two, now six and three. But Texas, hey, man, survive in advance, man. That's how it is in college football. These games mean so much with the last year being on the 14 playoff. Now, of course, guys, I will be looking at what's going to happen on Tuesday. I know I get it. Texas beat Alabama head to head. You don't have to convince me on that part. I get that. But what are, what are they looking for? Are we eye testing Alabama defeating basically one of the number one teams in offense to statistically beating them, you know, 42 to 28 versus Texas team. Barely beating Kansas State, where they did have a twenty-four to seven lead at a time, but then they let them come back. It just depends. I I will say this: I wouldn't be surprised if Alabama got ranked above Texas just because of what's happened lately with wins over LSU and Tennessee. But I would not also be surprised if Texas is above Alabama still just because of the head-to-head. I understand that wholeheartedly. Now, of course, jumping into some of the Pac-12 after dark teams. Now, of course, guys. If you cash the over 75 for the USC Washington game, good job. But for those guys who might have not cashed the live at 105 and a half, I am so sorry. You only got to 94 points. Guys, Washington defeated USC, man, 52 to 42. Holy cannoli, man. This was a game. Now, of course, these are the type of games I love to watch. But of course, man, you cannot have this game on the same time slot as Alabama and LSU. Guys, when you're making in the schedule and the TV people, move these games around. You could have easily put Washington and USC at the goddamn 3 or 4 o'clock slot. But, hey, man, here in North say no. Man, Michael Penix Jr., another, another Heisman game. I'm glad Washington's offense has shown up this week because after the Oregon game, past couple of weeks, man, they've been looking like real, not mediocre, but real lost in the – Real loss in the hills. Now, of course, hey, man, Washington, impressive dub. I do not think anyone will jump anyone this week. Um, The only people I see maybe jumping is maybe Alabama and Texas switching. But like I said, if Texas and Alabama stay, I think one through eight is staying. Nine will be probably Ole Miss. And then Penn State at number 10. Now, of course, guys, looking at the Georgia game, guys, man, I'm not going to lie Georgia wins again. Hey, survive in advance. Guys, what I found out that was interesting before that interception that Mr. Cook for the Tigers threw to the DT. Guys, man, these these two teams were identical, man. Everything from first downs to yardage to points, this and that. This was basically a head-to-head matchup. And, hey, man, it only takes one turnover to switch a game, kind of like the LSU-Alabama game. Jaden Daniels, one interception, really just flipped the game over and Maybe gave Alabama the dub. Now, of course, I will say, man, Georgia, I will say, Georgia, in my opinion, man, I'm not saying they're not bad. But I'm just saying, man, everyone criticizes Bama for this and that just because they have one loss. But Georgia is not barely beating teams, but they're just playing at the same level as Alabama when it comes to these other teams. We're talking Missouri, Auburn, 
some of these other games. Now I know, yes, they blew out Florida by so many points. I know they blew out Kentucky by so many points. But, guys, even the South Carolina game, for a while, it, it just – these slow starts for Georgia is going to catch up someday or somehow, but we will ex- probably expect Bama versus Georgia December 2nd in Atlanta at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium for the SEC title game. Now going on to the Big Ten. Guys, look, Ohio State, yes, I totally believe they were the number one team just off of the wins against Notre Dame and Penn State as a resume, but guys, these boys cannot play on the road. Now, yes, they did win by 19 against Rutgers, but it was 9-7 to seven at halftime. Rutgers was, was winning. Whoever cashed the plus 450 odds for Rutgers to be winning after the first half, man, congrats to you. But it just seems like two teams, two different teams, you know, one on, one on the road, one on home. Now, of course, when I judge teams, man, you have to be able to play well on the road i get it some of the games will be difficult but you've got to find a way to play better on the road of course sign stealing michigan hey man they win 41 13 i don't know how many signs they might have stole from purdue this week but hey michigan still keeps winning my thoughts on the whole sign stealing thing is pretty pretty insane i mean of course but in today's game of college football man if you're out there showing the four squares or doing this all this hoopla in the back I wouldn't be surprised people are still in signs. I'm not going to lie. But I will say with Michigan being undefeated, what everyone's hoping for is that Michigan loses rather soon because, guys, the NCAA is not going to punish Michigan for sign stealing this year. They will wait till after the season's over and then drop the hammer on them. But, hey, man, Michigan's still winning. Guys, we're almost at the end of November, so you know what that means. The game will be played soon, and we should have two undefeated teams with Ohio State and Michigan at the big house. Now that will be interesting. Going down, Oregon handling business. Of course, I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't want to play Oregon right now. I know they lost to Washington, but ever since they've lost to Washington, they have been showing you why they should be in the college football playoffs. Going down the list of some other games going around. Look, I'm looking at the top 25. I can talk about a few after that, but of course, we got – Clemson upset Notre Dame at a plus three and a half underdog. Now, of course, for y'all that didn't see the conversation with Davo and a fan at a radio station, guys, man, that must have lit a fire in it. Not just his butt, but his team's butt. So, yeah, man, Clemson, I, it's been a rough year, but hey, man, some of this is going to happen. I mean, not everyone can win every year. I mean, look, I mean, look, I mean, man, Bama lost two games last year by basically – Two plays with two seconds, and that's just how it happens, man. But with Clemson, they've just been on the worst end of the stick of this with some of the losses. Now, of course, man, going down, Deion Sanders, man. Woo, I'm not going to lie, man. He was very excited, man, first three weeks, man. They were showing him all on TV. But damn, after, man, after them losses, man, hey, we don't hear nothing from Deion. We don't hear nothing. From anyone on FS1 and ESPN, man. So I guess they got off the Colorado Buffalo's penis and finally hopped off that train. But it's okay. I know Colorado will be good probably next year or two years from now. Of course, they gotta they gotta start recruiting offensive linemen right now because you know Shadur is getting killed left and right. Now, of course, the offense, you know, has been lacking as of late, but of course. I will say probably Dion might have screwed up with, you know, demoting his OC. But, hey, man, you, when you're struggling, you got to do whatever you can try to to whatever it takes, man. I I don't blame Dion for trying at least because he, he knows there's there's no – the high the upside is that you're going to a bowl game. There's no, there's no college football playoff hopes. There's no Pac-12 title hopes. So you're trying to find ways, something that would work. Last night didn't work as all. Of course – Hey, man, Tennessee, easy dub against UConn. Utah, easy dub against Arizona State. Arizona with the upset victory. I cash plus two and a half Arizona against UCLA. Now, of course, UCLA is a, is, a, is a good team with Chip Kelly. But, guys, man, hey, man, Arizona's been playing some good ball lately. If you haven't been watching, man, they almost beat, they almost beat USC. Man, they almost beat, I think it was Washington. But these guys have been playing really well. Of course, going down the list, Kansas, man, playing with a backup quarterback, finds a way to win on the road against Iowa State. I'm not going to lie. I screwed up. Um, I've, I picked I picked Iowa State. It just is what it is. Um, I felt like they could have they covered that game. But, hey, Dean has been playing his butt off. 
Then ending up ending the last top 25. Tulane struggling on the road, but getting a getting a win, man. Hey, surviving, surviving advance, man. 13-10 over Eastern East Carolina. And finally, undefeated Air Force upset by Army and the under hit. Man, the under was at 31 and a half, and we got to 26. So, of course, Army upset in Air Force 23 to 3. Now, of course, guys, I'm not going to lie. There are a few teams that are undefeated that should be in the top 25. Obviously, James Madison should easily be in the top 25. This is ridiculous how they're not. I know with the transition from FCS to FBF, they are still bowl ineligible for this year. Next year should be something, but they should probably try to fight it because they have a good shot at landing a New Year's Six Bowl unless my alumni, Liberty Flames, Man, they are also undefeated. They need to be also top 25. Now, guys, what am I talking about? I'm not talking top 15. I'm not talking top 12. Guys, I'm literally just talking 25, 24, and 23. That is it. Now, of course, Liberty, first year in the CUSA, has clinched that spot. They're going to be playing the CUSA title, and they should win. It shouldn't even, shouldn't even be a conversation for debate. Same thing with even James Madison. They should win their division, their conference as well. But of course, we know how this rolls. Now, of course, guys, going down some of the list, I will say some of my concerns right now with the college football. Oh man, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I know probably people have been saying this for a while, but I've been saying this as soon as the man got hired, guys. Texas A&M, it's time to fire Jimbo Fisher. It just is what it is. I mean, guys, Kevin Sumlin had a better record than Jimbo, and y'all fired him. And he basically just doing the same at a lesser pay than what Jimbo's doing. Now, of course, Jimbo, you know, of course, I'm not going to say. he He's not a great coach. He's a good coach. I'll give it that. He's not a great coach, guys. Just because you win one title does not mean you're great. There's a lot of people who win one title. There's, some, there's great coaches that win more than one. You know what I mean? Now, of course, Jimbo's basically, he's been riding high, you know, if you look at his record. Look at his record. Trust me. Guys, you think I'm hating on the guy? Look at his record. If you pick out the years he had with Jameis Winston and maybe that one year of EJ Manuel, they were great. But after that, he has been an average 7-5, 8-4 coach. Guys, the man does not recruit a quarterback that well. Guys, he's not had a great, really a good offense, you know, since at AM. Yes, he's had pretty decent defenses. He's, he's had great recruiting classes the last two years. But, man, at the end of the day, man, He's just not getting it done. But if you want to, you know, give him excuses and coddle this man, fine. But the man's making way too much money to be going eight and four, eight and four, eight and four. And it's different, you know. Like, of course, him and Dabo, they probably make around the same amount of money. But I give Dabo a pass because Dabo's mentioned it. He's won 10, 11 games every other year, every year. And, of course, he's been running the ACC for seven years. Jimbo and them ain't even been sniffing nine wins, ten wins, SEC West appearance for the SEC title game. He's not – he's neither – he's doing none of that. And we still allow him to coach. So, going around, man, that that's probably that's probably my – you know, I would say that's probably my most concerns that I think it's time for – it's time for Jimbo to get fired, man. It just is what it is. Going around also some of these games as well. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's weird that I'm looking at this, but, you know, FSU survive and survive in advance on the road. They're on the way to, you know, that ACC title game undefeated. I know they got Miami. It's going to be a rivalry game. But with Miami losing to North Carolina, I cash plus six on that. That's Mario Cristobal has got to figure it out as well. Louisville, man, surprisingly, I don't know how they're I don't know how they're even ranked 13th at times because sometimes they look god awful and sometimes they find a way to win. And guys with one loss, man, hey, they got a shot, man. They got a shot to make some noise, which that would probably piss off a lot of people. But coming in from 13, and you gotta find a way to jump over some of these powerhouses like Washington, Oregon, Alabama, and Texas. I don't think if if FSU loses sometime soon or doesn't win the ACC. I feel like the ACC will not have a team college football playoff, you know, going around some of the other games, guys. I mean, Wisconsin has not looked the same. I know if, I know if Luke fickle and having freaking, um, 
was his game? What's his name? Mordecai for the quarterback. Guys, Wisconsin is just does not look right. I will say. Nebraska, we already know, man. It's got new one year coach of Matt Rule. Guys, they're just gonna start losing games. It is what it is. But I will say they do put up a good fight. I'll give Georgia Tech some credit, man. Guys, man, they're a weird team. Um, but hey, they find ways to win. I mean, I, I've always been critical of Shane. I think, yeah, Shane King, quarterback, former AM quarterback. But man, Coach Key, man, has got these guys scoring a ton of points now. It just depends. I mean, you beat UNC, you beat Virginia, but you lose the bowling green. That's where we got to fix some of those things. You could have won against Louisville, so you got to fix some of those things. Hey, UAB defeating Florida Atlantic, Trent Dilfer's first year at UAB. It's going kind of smoothly. Guys, if there's one thing in life that you should bet, it is always Iowa unders. Holy crap, the under on that game I think was also 30, and it only got to 17. But Iowa found a way to beat Northwestern. I think it was at Wrigley Field. Coming around Central Florida, winning their first Big 12 conference game. Whoop, 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 whoop. Tulsa, man, how are you going to start off 14-0 versus Charlotte and lose 33-26 to in OT? I will say Texas State, hey, looking really good with Finley. Man, of course, ever since they're upset early in the season, man, they've been doing good. UNLV, guys, the best team to bet on against the spread, guys. They are they're eight and one against the spread. So this team is pretty good. Going around looking at some of the competition. Hey man, SMU finding a way to win against Rice. Hey, but we cash plus 12 and a half versus Rice. Washington State, man, they have just been on a bad bad roller coaster ride. Of course, losing to Stanford. I'm not gonna lie, Stanford surprised me, man. They they beat Hawaii. I know they beat Colorado. Now beating Washington State. I I think I think I think I bet the under total wins for Stanford. I think they went over by that. So I'll take that L. And hey, Fresno State keeping the good record alive, man. One loss, find a way to beat Boise State. So of course, we'll see what happens in the Mountain West Conference. But going around in college football, guys, guess what, man. Uh, like I mentioned, man, it's going to be exciting what happens on Tuesday. As I mentioned, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if Bama and um, Texas flip from 7 to 8. It wouldn't surprise me just because of what's happened lately and what have you done for me lately. Um, of course, Texas losing to Oklahoma early. Of course, those close rivalry games, we get that. But now if Oklahoma losing back-to-back to teams that, you know, Texas either has beaten. I know they beat those, the mess out of God dang um Kansas but I don't think they play I don't think they play Oklahoma State this year but hey Texas hey still with a backup quarterback finding a way to beat a good Kansas State team so I'll give them credit on that um going elsewhere around guys man it's gonna be exciting um guys I will say right now the Heisman for me Michael Penix easily uh just throwing up a ton of stats unless Bo Nix can find a way to just keep that that steam train going all the way to the Pac-12 and find a way to beat Michael Penix we'll see about that but right now if I'm going with my top six in the college football playoffs, I am going to go. I will go Georgia number one. I'll go Ohio State two, Michigan three, Florida State four, and then five, six, Washington, Oregon. Not too much movement for me. Everyone has been playing with on course. Now, of course, guys, hey, we got some exciting games this week, man. You never know, man. But, hey, man, this has been James West with the West Report with and college football week 10 recap i hope you guys enjoy that i hope i can do more of these i've been trying to find ways to do so many videos but with finding time between life and wife and kid and this guys we'll figure it out some way somehow but as always hey follow athletically decline on all social media platforms subscribe to the youtube channel guys we're trying to get to 500 subscribers by the end of the year we are basically 137 away from that guys please keep hitting that follow button please please keep even hitting that like button, and as always, man, shoot, time to go.